dear students welcome to your microprocessor and microcontroller first class here we start our discussion from 8085 microprocessor before starting this topic i like to give you a brief of microprocessor actually we use different types of microprocessors in our daily life the laptop desktop that we are using are mainly operated by microprocessor they are very advanced microprocessor like intel core i3 i5 i7 processors they can do many complicated tasks very easily so their architectures are quite complicated and advanced hence we cannot do our discussion or you can say we cannot go directly to discuss this advanced microprocessors so 8085 is our current topic to start which was introduced by intel in 1976 so intel 9 Intel has manufactured 8085 in the year of 1976 and this microprocessor is 8 bit microprocessor the basic fabrication features of this microprocessors are the maximum cpu clock rate is 3 5 or 6 megahertz so this clock rate will decide the speed of this microprocessor so in your current era the microprocessor that we are use we are using in our intel uh, in our laptop actually uh, are like core i3 core i5 or core i7 these microprocessors are clock operated in the scale of gigahertz so you can understand that at the time of 1976 the intel 8085 microprocessor was not so much fast sir than today's laptop but it is uh, the 8085 is operated in the scale of megahertz clock frequency that is 3 5 or 6 megahertz okay and this clock frequency directly control the speed of this microprocessor so speed of 8085 microprocessor Sir, is directly controlled by this clock rate, and this clock rate is here in the scale of megahertz. So this is actually three, five, or six megahertz. Okay. The next point is when it was introduced. So it was initially introduced in the year of 1976, but as you can see, there are different versions are introduced. So it uh, this was. Uh, in the 1976, the first 8085 was introduced. Then its upper versions, like uh, versions where it can be worked with five or six megahertz frequency, are introduced in the between of 1976 to 2000. The next is the mean term. Sorry, the next is the minimum feature size. Okay, so the third point is the minimum feature size. the fourth point is transistor count and you can see the last point <coughs> here is technology used so these three points are interconnected the n mos means what n type metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor that is the transistor that is used to manufacture this ic so how many n moses are there in a single 8085 ic the answer is 6500 and what is the channel length of each and every m n mos transistor the answer is 3 micrometer so n mos transistors are used to manufacture 8085 ic and the count of n mos is 6500 and minimum feature size that is the size between the source and drain that is also known as channel length is 3 micrometer okay so next is what is the size of data bus and address bus so data bus here 8 bit and address bus is 16 bit okay so what is the use of data bus 
it is used to transfer data from microprocessor to memory <coughs> or other io devices or from other io devices or memory chip to microprocessor and what is the function of address line its function is to point a particular address location in the memory chip or or io devices so data line data line uh, width or data bus width is 8 bit for 8085 microprocessor that means 8085 microprocessor can work with a data of length 8 bit only it cannot work beyond that and its address bus size is 16 bit that means it can be used to locate any location in between 0 to 2 to the power 16 minus 1 that is the count of memory location okay so that means you if you consider a memory chip then the memory chip size will be 2 to the power 16 okay that is equals to 64 kilobyte so if you use a 64 kilobyte memory chip then each uh, each locations of that particular memory chip can be read or can be written by the microprocessor with the data okay so this is the use of address bus and data bus and the next point is the pin count so in the chip of 8085 there are total 40 pins are there and these uh, pins are fabricated according to dual inline package okay so dual inline package means they are they are fabricated in a such a way that in a single line there are two pins at the two ends then the next point is design so design wise this 8085 microprocessor is von Neumann architecture design so what is von Neumann architecture design here the program memory and the data memory are not separately stored into different locations rather these two are are these two are present into the same address space so in this 8085 architecture the program memory and data memory are present into the same address space no separate address space are used to store program memory or data memory so these are the basic important features of 8085 microprocessor the next is point basically what is the predecessor microprocessor before 8085 and the answer is intel 8080 and what is the next microprocessor the answer is intel 8086 okay and there is some advanced features in 8085 with respect to your previous microprocessor 8080 okay so if you see my note then here it is written the extra features of 8085 with respect to 8080 is 8085 supports different interrupts and serial input output functions okay so these two are the extra features interrupt process and serial communication between different devices so <clears throat> so up to this all the features basic features are discussed next i will discuss the pin diagram so in the figure 3 i have drawn the pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor here you can see that there are total 40 pins and in the left side there are 20 pins in the right side there are 20 pins so this is actually dual in line package and among those 40 pins if you see if you see then you can you can understand that first pin 1 and 2 are x1 x2 are used to generate the clock frequency or clock 
signal for 085 then point number three or pin number three that is reset out so it is used to reset the other peripheral devices when connected with 8085 then sod sid these two pins are serial input output function then pin number six seven eight nine 10, 11, these pins are used for interrupt process. So trap RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 5 interrupt R, INTR means interrupt request. Then INTA means interrupt acknowledgement. These pins are used for, in, for handling the <coughs> interrupt process. And one thing you should note here that I have drawn a bar or a single line over INTA to show you that INTA, it is actually interrupt acknowledgement pin is active low. Okay, so this complement sign is used to understand that this is an active low pin. Okay, then pin number 12 to pin number 19. Here you can see that it is written as AD0, AD1, AD2, AD3, AD4, AD5, AD6, AD7. Okay. So basically, AD means A for address, D for data. So address and data, these two things are there for pin number 12 to pin number 19. Okay. So you can say that these pin number 12 to 19 are the multiple usable pins because it can be used as an address pin as well as it can be used as a data pin. so basically these are the multiplexed pin it is also known as lower order address bus multiplexed with data bus okay so what is lower order address bus so if you go go here then you can see that address bus length is 16 bit. So if you divide into two parts, 8 bit and 8 bit, then a first 8 bit is upper 8 bit, the next 8 bit is lower 8 bit. Okay. So if you represent this thing in by in particular format, in a binary format, then it will start from A0, <coughs> sorry, A0 to A15. So A0 to A15 are the address lines. Among the, the among these address lines, A0 to A7 are used as a multiplexed address line with data bus. So data bus width is 8 bit. So it is D0 to D7. So here you can see that these two things are multiplexed. Okay. So they these two things are multiplexed into a single unit. That is AD0 to AD7. And what is the uh, advantage of using this kind of architecture? The advantage is that the total count of pins are reduced if we use this kind of architecture. Okay. So, what does it mean? It means here you can see data bus is 8 bit, address bus is 16 bit. So each bit requires one pin, then total pin will be 24 pins. Okay. But if I use multiplexing process, then my data bus width will be 8 bit, but address bus width will be 8 bit only. Okay. Because it is multiplexed. So total pin count at that time will be 8 plus 8, 16. Okay, so that is happening here. Okay, so here you can see that these eight pins are multi-usable -use pins. It can be used as address as well as data. So the count of the pin is reduced if we use this architecture. Okay, so at that time, time in the year, year of 1976 the engineers was so interested to reduce the pin count okay and if if 
the pin count is reduced then overall cost of that it is rate 5 ic will be reduced because fabrication process will be easy right so here we have to fabricate 40 pins but in case of using individually address and data lines then at that time the total pin count will be 40 plus 8 48 so it will in, in enhance the cost so to reduce that thing the, this multiplexing process is used okay so here is your lower order address and data bus so where is your upper upper order address higher order address so you can see the those address pins from pin number 22 to 28 okay so pin number 20 is what is vss that is ground and pin number 21 to 28 is what is your higher order address bus so a d z a 0 to a 7 is done so a 8 to a 15 so this is your higher order address line so these are assigned to pin number 21 to 28 then <coughs> pin number 29 that is a0 pin number 30 ale pin number 31 wr complement 32 read complement 33 s1 34 io slash ember so these pins are actually used for in for actually used for controlling different operation of 8085 microprocessor okay so there are different tasks internally microprocessor uh, actually 8085 internally 8085 do different tasks they performs different tasks so to perform different tasks it requires many signals so signals are s0 s1 read write io slash ember ale so these are the internally used pin okay to accomplish different tasks okay and then there is a pin 35 ready so it is a ready pin that is a pin uh, is used to communicate with other peripheral devices okay using these pins other peripheral de devices can be communicate with 8085 then there is a reset pin so user can reset the 8085 using this pin then there is a clock out so user can use the clock of 8085 as a source of the clock for other peripheral devices so user can take clock signal from 37 pin and give to other peripheral devices then there is a pins there, there there is a pin 39 and 38 so these pins are hold and hold acknowledgement hlda means hold acknowledgement okay so these pins are used for particularly dma kind of operation dma operation is direct direct memory access operation okay so this is used for that purpose and finally pin number 40 is your supply pin okay so these are the pins for 8085 and you don't need to remember the pin numbers but what you need to understand from this diagram how the pins are allotted okay which pins are allotted for which purpose so this information you should know so from this figure there are many things that we can understand first is the use of multiplexing multiplexing the lower order address bus with data bus so okay what is the advantage of that it reduces total pin counts then which pins are used for interrupt process pin number 6 to 2, 9, 11 which pins are used for serial communication sod sid there are pins for controlling different internal tasks like io slash m bar s1 read write a l e a s0 there are pins for particularly upper order address bus that is a15 to a8 there are pins for hold i uh, means this is there are pins for the direct memory access operation that is hold and hold acknowledgement and Peripheral devices can communicate, means other devices can communicate with 8085 using pin, ready pin, okay, and uh, and 
you can say that from 37 that is clock out you can take the clock signal give other peripheral devices okay reset out you can give reset out signal to other peripheral devices okay so these are the things that we can understand from the pin diagram the next is your signal diagram so from this signal diagram we can understand the how these pins are connected okay the nature of signal that is coming into this into these pins or coming out from this pin okay so like here you can see that i have given a number one two three and four okay particularly this four uh, group i have made so first group is one so what is the name of that group i have written here this is serial io ports and what is the function of the serial io ports this is sid and sod for serial communication serially data communication then group number two there are pins trap rs 7.5 6.5 isd 5.5 int here ready hold reset in so th all these pins are you can see this arrow is, is coming into the 8085 microprocessor okay so that means this group of pins are externally initiated signal okay so this are the externally initiated signals that are coming into the 8085 microprocessor okay so all the interrupt signals are coming into the 8085 from the external devices ready this is also coming from external devices hold coming from external devices reset in this signal is also coming from some external switch or external device then uh, group number three so group number three is for what it is the acknowledging group external signal acknowledgement okay so means after getting the information or after getting some signals related to your interrupt <coughs> and hold operation 8085 will send back to them this interrupt acknowledgement signal or hold acknowledgement signal this is the acknowledging signal that 8085 sends to those devices okay and there is a fourth group this fourth group is what control and status signal so basically all these pins are used for controlling different operation or showing different status of microprocessor okay so here you can see that ale s0 s1 io slash m complement rd complement wr complement all these signals are there and these are all outgoing signals means 8085 sending out these signals to other devices or other parts okay <clears throat> and there is a 3 and 37 these two are the reset out pin and clock out pin so this is actually outgoing signals for clock out or reset out okay and here is a for pin number 40 is the supply voltage pin number 20 is your ground voltage pin number 1 and 2 is to produce your clock signal and pin number a15 to 8 sorry pin number 21 to 28 is your higher order address bus this is the outgoing signal that means micro is sending out this signal to other memory chip or other peripheral devices and the pin number 19 to 12 that is multiplexed address and data bus 80 to 87 are the bidirectional signal because data can be moved from any direction from microprocessor to memory or means uh, memory or other devices or from memory or other devices to microprocessor so this for for in data purpose it is the bidirectional but for address purpose it is the unidirectional always outgoing so always microprocessor sends out the address okay but it can receive data or it can send out data but as for address always microprocessor will send out the particular address okay so and another important thing is that from this figure what we can understand that this ad0 to ad7 <coughs> using a sing single channel okay so single channel is used for address multiplexed address come data bus how is it possible means how to how to distinguish that when it is use, uh, using as an address bus or when it is using as a data bus so for that purpose there is a particular signal ale is there 
So what is the full form of ALE? Address latch enable. So using this pin, microprocessor can distinguish whether this AD0 to AD7, these pins are used are used as a address bus or as a data bus. Okay, so this is all about today's class.